Yeah, I had to deal with Josh Waxman. Joshua Waxman. Joshua Waxman. Mr. Waxman. Josh Waxman. What's up, social media world? Josh Waxman videoing in here. It is Monday afternoon, and this is how we're spending our Mondays. Check this out. I found him on a couch a couple years ago. He was going through some issues. Um, by the time it was all said and done, he scammed me out of tens of thousands of dollars. Long story short, I do not recommend him. He did scam us, and from my understanding, he scammed quite a few people. He kept dropping his price lower and lower and lower until it was almost nothing. And I'm like, I'm out of here. I don't want to be involved in this. This is sketchy. And then still didn't bite, so he went to my boss, sold him, never produced. And it's just not the case. He owes me leads, he knows he owes me money, uh, and still won't call, so. Imagine the level of deception. Uh, I would never do business with that guy under any circumstances. That's illegal, that's a crime. Welcome back everyone to Roofing Insights. I'm your host Dmitry Lupinski. In today's video, we're discussing Joshua Wexman and the rise and fall of his company, Claim Nerds. If you own a marketing agency or sell leads to the contractors, this video is absolutely must watch for you. Please stay all the way to the end. For the rest of you, I have 10 lessons that we all can learn from Mr. Waxman and failure of his company. If this video will help you in any way, shape or form, if you got a really good tip for yourself or maybe you feel like more people need to see this type of content, please share, like, comment, everything helps with the engagement. YouTube will recommend this video to more people as well. Your feedback is appreciated. I would like to start with a quick disclaimer. The purpose of this video is not to bash Mr. Waxman or his company. The purpose of this video is only to provide valuable information for you guys, for roofers. We all need to learn the lesson from the failure of the business. And unfortunately, Mr. Waxman and his company made every single mistake possible. And we're just here trying to summarize those mistakes and help others not to repeat them. As a community, we're also trying to help Josh to get on the right track to help him in expensive California because he keep saying how expensive it is to raise kids there and to do business in California. So for all of those reasons, the purpose of this video is to help not to bash, not to be negative, but to be positive. With all of that, let's get it started. Number one, don't trust every affiliate program out there. We have first seen Joshua Wexman and his company at SVG affiliate page. We've seen that SVG is referring him and recommending him to the contractor. That may be one of the reasons so many of you have bought his services. So our first lesson is don't just trust any affiliate program out there. You guys as a contractors always have to do your research. If Roofing Insights will recommend you a vendor, it's still your job to do your due diligence. Check it out. If it's a good fit for you, if it's fit for your business model, maybe it will work for me, but it's not gonna work for you. You have to make a decision. It's not always smart just to do business because you see business recommended on the page that you trust. That leads us to lesson number two. Do your own research, ask for references, because in lead generation business, it's very easy to create a Ponzi scheme when you collect the money and keep collecting money to pay to fulfill orders for the previous ones. What we've seen with Waxman on so many posts, he keeps claiming how expensive it is to live in California. Listen, you will never hear from me or from any decent business owner about your personal problems. How much my bills are, it's not your problem, it's not problem of your clients. Nobody should care how much he, he's paying for you know, living in California, his gas price and stuff. It has nothing to do with the service or product. So what we're telling you is simple. Ask for references because if he's trying to sell you leads and guarantees for 30 days, ask him for a couple of references of he, for his clients that he sold two months ago and you will see if he is not delivering to them, what's the chance he's gonna deliver to you? So do your research, pick up a phone, don't be lazy, call a couple of references. Good business owner will never be offended if you ask him for references. Lesson number three, if you 
you don't understand business model, don't freaking do it. I've spoke with Mr. Waxman. I've spoke with a lot of contractors who used him, Justin Woodruff, Radio Roofing. I spoke to his ex-employees. And to this day, I don't understand the business model. It started as a telemarketing service. They were selling leads. Uh, by cold calling people. Then they become this canvassing company where they send you canvasser and uh, you pay like $2,500 and part of it goes to Vaxman, half of it goes to a uh, sales rep who so, uh, sells you. And then that, um, you know, part of this money will go towards travel expenses, hotel and cost of living, whatever. But then also, they sell 50 leads for 50, 60, 70 dollars. I mean, it's very confusing. The business model is confusing. I would not do business with claim nurse simply f because I didn't understand what they're in business for. Are you canvassing service? Are you lead generator? Are you sales rep? All of those little questions, it sounds like innovative, but if you don't understand it, don't do it. Don't sign up for anything you don't understand. Lesson number four, your business is not what you think it is. It's what Google search says it is. When you have only one star service, whether you're a restaurant, whether you're a fitness center, whether you're a hotel or any other service or business, People simply not going to do business with you. You're going to be out of business in no time. That's the case with the claim nerds. We have tried to call his reference. He gave me only two of them out of 150 people. He claims two references. We spoke with one guy this morning and he did get five leads. Four of them were bogus leads. One of them were decent. The guy is happy only because he got $40,000 job out of it. When I asked him a question, would you recommend Waxman service to others? He simply said, no, I would not recommend. I didn't use his uh, other services like canvassing service. I did use telemarketing phone calls. He said he tried to replace his uh, bogus leads with some good, better leads, but it was quite a process. It took place back in September. As a matter of fact, Waxman doesn't even offer the service anymore. And this business owner told us that it looks like Waxman keep giving him reference as a reference to other contractors. So he keep getting these calls and people asking his uh, referral for those services. And he said, I can't speak on the canvassing service. That's actually real service that uh, claim nerds offers today. So with all of that, I would say it's fair to say that claim nerds is not even one star. It's, I mean, I don't know if there would be zero or negative one star, he would be there. So out of 150 people, he can't even come up with one positive review or recommendation. So you guys have to learn from it. If you want to really make it online these days, you have to have at least four star plus reputation. They say if your business has three stars or less, you're pretty much going to die in no time unless you improve. Nobody's going to make it perfect. If you go and look at the hotels or restaurants or uh, Amazon sellers, you will see the most businesses have complaints. But maintaining 4.5, 4.6, 4.8, anything north of 4 is great for any brand. Lesson number five, when people write you a bad review, don't start a war with them. Try to respond in a reasonable way. Try to listen and understand why that person who used your service is not happy. The more you listen, the better you're going to come out in your response. Trust me, start in the war online, in comments, in engagement, whether it's a Facebook, Google, doesn't really matter, or even video. You don't have to start a war with anybody who gave you a bad review or anyone for that matter, because when you do that, you come out as a negative person and it's not good PR, it's not good reputation management, if you will. The best thing you can do is to be polite, to say something like, hey, thank you for your feedback, we're working on it, uh, we're dealing with the situation, tell me more, let me reach out to you. Show the world that you're actually trying to resolve the problem. You will get, whether you like it or not, negative feedback, even from people who probably should be happy, but they still found something not to be. It's not your problem, it's their problem, deal with it professionally. If you read Mr. Waxman's responses, every single post, every single comment, whether it's personal, whether it's in private, 
It was always met with anger, with the fight back. Every single person who ever came on him and said and questioned his business or his I don't know, his results, every single person got attacked back, got blocked, got yelled at, got called names and stuff like that. That's just not the way to, to be professional online these days. Lesson number six, Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation, five minutes to ruin it. If you watch behavior of Mr. Joshua Waxman, how he was managing his anger and how he was dealing with the hate and the heat when everything starts revealing about his business. He ruined it, I firmly believe he ruined his business after the fact, not in the beginning. I firmly believe that his business could be salvaged. Maybe he's done some mistakes, maybe he did even run Ponzi scheme for a little bit, running Peter to pay Paul, but he ruined his reputation at the end going to the park uh, with his kids and going on Facebook Live got so much negativity from the entire community and so many people just said, even if he would be a decent business owner, I firmly believe that after that video, not many people would wanna sign up with him because he exposed himself. So be very careful what you do when you turn that camera, when you send that message to ex-employee or current employee or maybe your hater because the whole world might see it and that's exactly what Mr. Warren Buffett was talking about. It takes five minutes to ruin it and sometimes there is no turning back. You can't just recover. Sometimes you work for something really hard 10-15 years and now nobody wants to be associated with you. Lesson number seven, never lie online. I would never bring this in my own video. I promise you guys this is going to be a positive video but Waxman did not uh, leave me any choice because he affected somebody I respect and admire in this industry, Radio Roofing. Uh, Justin Woodruff and I owe it out of respect to Justin and his team because what Mr. Waxman did, I firmly believe that he lied uh, several times. Uh, I know both stories. Obviously, they have a conflict between Justin and Joshua, but Joshua Waxman have not uh, shared any proofs with the community. He only uh, through accusation there that um, Justin Woodruff have porn problems, cheated on his wife, his wife was installing roofs, uh, he was addicted to porn and all of that dirt he was trying to throw at him. So I had to investigate myself. I have to ask Justin, hey, why did you actually fire this guy? Because the story is completely different from what Waxman is telling us. So here's the story. and. I actually have uh, documentation, even videos, to prove Justin's story. Joshua was hired in 2018 by Ready Rubin Company. He was to come to town and get some contingency signed for us. He did come to town. He did not produce. He was fired on day two uh, for some reasons that I'm not willing to discuss on camera right now. So Joshua Waxman, I do not recommend him. He did scam us. And from my understanding, he scammed quite a few people. I hope we're able to work us out together. Uh, as a roofing community and get this guy out of it. Hope you have a great day. So Justin Woodruff gave Waxman his company truck and only after two days of working for him, he have received email from concerned homeowner. What happened is, this part's a little bit adult, adult uh, themed here. This is a true story. Homeowner in North Carolina who was uh, tired of dealing with a neighbor who was a hooker install a cameras in front of his house and what he did he sent him clips apologizing saying hey sir I'm sorry you're dealing with but your company truck was parked in front of my building and in my building I have a hooker and there's been a big big traffic to that apartment for days we're not gonna say or accuse if Mr. Waxman being with a hooker or not. Uh, we do see him and her together in one shot. Uh, we also see that action is taking place at three o'clock in the morning. He's out of town. There's no business for him to be even in such a place, right? But he spent pretty much entire night there 
And it's not just in Woodruff's words. I actually have seen the email from the homeowner with a whole bunch of little clips from security camera. You see the truck, you see Baxman, you see all night action and the homeowner is pretty much saying, listen, I know what's happening here. So homeowner was accusing Mr. Waxman using company truck and going to this you know, Hoover's place, whatever. Whether he did it or not, I don't know. It's not my business. I'll let you guys comment below what you think. Obviously, Mr. Waxman says he's never been with a hooker entire life and he's never done drugs. Me and Jeremy Walls smoke crack together, it's true. I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm a crackhead. I understand why Justin Woodruff let Waxman go after such an incident. I would too. If my company truck would be uh, somewhere in the middle of the night and I would get such an email, it's, you know, whether it's a club, whether it's a script club, whether it's a you know, like drug place, whatever. Like uh, you have to be careful what you do when you drive somebody's vehicle. So Justin Woodruff have met him the very next morning, say, sorry, man, can't do it. You know, it didn't work out. He worked for me for two days. Let's so just, you know, he paid him and Waxman flew back to California. That's the story that from the day one I knew because I have actually seen the proof. It's not he said, she said, that's actually the story. I spoke with two people and I've seen the proof for two. Obviously one don't have any proofs, another one it's pretty legit with documentation. So um, I'm obviously siding with Justin Woodruff and his company. And my lesson to you is never lie online and when you spread the lie is only going to come back tenfold back at you and you're probably going to regret it. Lesson number eight, never ever bring politics into your post. I mean, I love to talk about Trump and as far as like branding and wall, some issues. I mean, I think there is a fine line what we can and cannot talk. But when you go online and you say America has failed, because health insurance is so expensive. I mean, you just offended me and every immigrant who comes to this country. Guys, I bet you if you would drop me right now in California with a hundred bucks and a cell phone, I'll make it. Give me a couple months, I'll open a business there and I promise you I'm not gonna fail. America has not failed. Maybe you failed, but America has not failed. Keep politics out of your post. Another post Mr. Waxman did as a business owner and obviously it got so much heat, so many people got involved. Obviously right now political situation in the United States is 50-50. You never can win whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. I mean we should not be talking about it. We should talk business. We should do good for our community, for people around us. Um, worry about our little seats, pay taxes, work hard. I mean I don't care who is the president is, I have to pray for either one of them, but to say that America has failed, I mean, it's just bad mentality. Lesson number nine, don't bring Christianity or religion in your post. I see that a lot lately, feels like any person who don't agree with you, you, you go to their profile and see if he's a Muslim or Christian or Mormon or like, or like whatever he is, you want to use it as an argument. Bad idea. Don't do it. Try to have an argument about actually something intellectual, something that you can wrap your brain around, not just where you were born or color of your skin or race or what church you go to. It's just generally a bad idea. What I have seen with the Waxman, he would attack people, including myself, with statements like, oh, you're a Christian, you're judgmental. Uh, how do you live? Wow. It's, you know what? Um, I don't talk about my religion. My videos will talk about my religion. What I do in my companies will talk about my religion and my faith. What I do every single day, you can't hide it. The last lesson I have for you guys for today, lesson number 10. Sometimes it's better to work for someone than to have your own business. Yes, I said it. Business is not for everyone. And this is my advice for Joshua Waxman. He said it best in his video when he was at the park with his kids, when he said every single company he has worked for would take him back. And I believe that. Um, guys, I've worked with over a dozen companies in the last 13 years. 
all of those companies welcome me back with warm arms. He definitely has the sale personality. He will sell anyone. He sold a lot of you guys. He, he has no problem of selling. He has a problem with the product. He can't create good product or service, but he can definitely sell. So my advice to Mr. Waxman is, quit what you're doing right now, which is your business, go back selling for someone and you'll be successful, especially in California. Mr. Waxman, you don't have to scam contractors. You don't have to sell services, get the money down and have people prepay for your services if you can't deliver them. Maybe it's better for you to go back and sell for someone. So my final uh, message to all of you guys, I know how forgiven roofers are, and we all should give Mr. Waxman a second chance. Maybe one of you will offer him a job. Comment below if you would hire him to sell for you. He is not necessarily a bad man. I feel like he made a lot of bad decisions in his life. It's obvious. Uh, but I think he still can be um, do good. He has little kids to take care of. Uh, obviously, he lives in California. I mean, we do have a labor shortage right now. So... Uh, if you need a sales rep, I would consider uh, maybe give him an offer. I know it's hard because there's so much negativity about the persona, but he's not bad sales rep. Let's just establish that. He was just a failed business owner, and we at Roofing Insights felt like it's our obligation to tell the world what kind of business he had run, how many people he had wronged, and I owe it to my community. I owe it to you guys. So comment below if you have experience with Joshua Waxman. Comment below if this video have touched you and what do you think about this topic. I want to hear from you. I don't like, I don't enjoy to make negative videos. This is for me as negative as it gets of the video and I'm not very comfortable. I'm trying to, to bring positivity out. I want to be positive about everything I do. So thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have not yet, please go check out our affiliate program on our website. We have a lot of solid vendors that you can trust. I want to know your opinion about them. And if you're looking for a recommendation, you can always come and ask us for any recommendation on any service in the roofing industry. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, trust me, it's not a good, it's not a good idea.